Today's world is one of the best times to be alive, some people might say. But is it really? Statistically, we might have the best welfare the world has ever seen. We don't have to shit in a hole in the ground anymore. We don't have to go hunting every day for our food anymore. We don't even have to worry about dying from some easily treatable illnesses. Technology and living as a society has changed the world for good. We can't go back either. You might be able to live somewhere in the countryside far, far away from civilization, but you'll probably still be using technology to make your life easier. And all this technology is coming at a big cost. All of this technology is making us more connected than ever. In fact, did you know that everybody on this world is connected to everybody? through a maximum of six people. Even the bush bush people far away in the woods are connected to you through a maximum of six people. So as a little side note, if you want to meet your idol, he or she is only six people away to becoming your best friend. Sorry, my nerdy side just went a little enthusiastic there. I was saying technology is great, but it also has a very big negative cost. We are losing our privacy. You cannot hide anywhere in this world. The world has become very small. You can travel the whole world in a couple of days. You can go to Google Maps and view almost every part of the world. You can go online and find almost anything you're looking for. And that just might be the biggest problem of today. It's almost impossible to stay totally off radar. And when you want to find someone, you'll find that person if you just keep searching, which is not a problem if society is acting human and kind, but that's just the problem. Some people just want to destroy you. They act upon their devil side. They dedicate their life to destroying yours. I felt violated, really, because it was uh, it puts mental images in your head and, and I... It made me feel extremely uncomfortable. This is Liz McLaren. She's a former singer of the rather successful pop group Atomic Kitten. As a public figure, her life is quite known to people. She has a big following and a lot of people who want a place in her life. Liz found herself targeted by an online stalker, an experience that would change her life forever. My abuse started three years ago, just after I joined Twitter. A fan started posting extreme sexual messages on my newsfeed. And they were impossible to ignore. No matter how many times she blocked him, he just kept creating new accounts. Just to spam more extreme messages and images. Sometimes he was so abusive that Liz just threw her phone against the wall, leaving the phone in pieces. Just so she doesn't have to be confronted with her stalker for a couple of hours. I don't think anyone understands how scary it can be. You know, if, if you've got a letter in the post that said, I am going to do this to you, and it's going to be like this, and this is exactly what will happen, you'll be petrified because it's real, it's in your hand, it's there. But online, people think that that's not as real, whereas actually the words are exactly the same. It's true that some people nowadays seem to forget what the impact on someone's life can be because of someone's experiences online. The internet is full of trolls and people seem to feel godlike from behind their keyboards. The numbers don't lie. One in three women and one in six men will experience stalking at some point in their lives. The impact stalking has on someone's life is significant and almost half of the victims even experience depression or PTSD. What kind of text messages do you get? Um, it's not the normal, hello, how are you? This is Esther, a 20-year-old student whose story highlights the blurred lines between harmless online interaction and someone's dangerous obsession. It X-rated sort of thing, something you would not want to get, something you would not want to read, something you do not want anyone to read, because when people read it, they think, oh, Esther, what are you doing with this person? Because you must have done something with him for him to send you messages like that. And I'm thinking, it's his imagination, it's not me. The weird thing in Esther's story is that her friends don't seem to realize the impact it has on Esther's life. Her friends don't seem to take the harassment seriously. 
They think it's just fun and games. But for Esther, it is very real, which makes the situation even harder for her to overcome. I feel like they think it's a joke. They don't really get it that I'm upset about it because I really am. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And no matter how many times I say no, it's almost like he hears yes. Some stalkers even go a step further. They do not only want to have a place in somebody's life, they want someone to die. At least that's what they're saying, but not in a way someone would just wipe it off their shoulders. They're making sure their dark message is received. We meet Elle, a former singer who is very talented and was having a promising future ahead. She was building her career with passion, trying to inspire people with her singing. This all came to an end. Her career derailed after years of serious online abuse. I used to get death threats on a daily basis. At the most, it was about 20 to 30 messages a day of death threats a day, telling me they was going to send a hitman to my house. Um, that they was going to slit my throat. Um, yeah, very, very detrimental stuff. And, and they also focused a lot on, on what I was trying to achieve with my music, saying that I was talentless, that I was ugly, that I didn't deserve to be alive, that I didn't deserve a music career. The impact on her life was enormous. She even started believing the negative things her stalker was telling her. The stalker said she was ugly, that she didn't deserve this career, and even that she didn't deserve to be alive. Elle's confidence was shattered. Her career had ended because of the stalking, and she needed help to get rid of this stalker. Although anyone can see how threatening and dangerous this abusive stalking behavior is, the police didn't do shit about the situation. It was through her own detective work that her stalker was traced. After five long years of aggressive abuse, a woman was finally arrested. A woman Elle had never even met before. While Elle's story is a very drastic one, some stalkings end up even way worse. Some stalkers walk away from their phones and keyboards. For some stalkers, online stalking just isn't really cutting it. They take it offline. They will physically come to you. They'll watch you with their own eyes. They might not even hide when you spot them. The recent Netflix series, Reindeer, is the perfect example of this. For anyone not knowing the series, it's this weird story about a woman whose life is just dedicated to stalking. She's not a very abusive kind, but just always there, waiting outside your house all day, just to say hello to you every single day, sending you messages every day, calling up your family to check in on you. You will have no privacy at all, but when it comes to legal consequences, she knows that she is not crossing any lines and there's almost nothing you can do about it. But in some cases, the stalking takes a very, very dark turn. Katie's story is where all the alarm bells ring. Her ex-partner couldn't let her go after their breakup. Despite police involvement, the situation even escalates tragically. Her ex would constantly be turning up at the house tap on the windows, late at night trying to get her attention. He even managed to sleep in the backyard and steal a spare set of keys to the house. Katie's story ends in the most devastating way possible, with murder. Katie was just 24 when she was killed. She left behind four children and a grieving family. Her ex-partner was sentenced to 20 years in prison. This showcases how stalking is impacting lives, and with the latest technology, Stalking has become a more serious threat. You can buy cheap and small GPS trackers and plant them on someone's vehicle. You know 24-7 where somebody is. Know their routines and plan whatever you like. Almost everybody is somehow active on social media. Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Discord, YouTube, Reddit, you name it. We share so much information and details from ourselves nowadays, it's not even possible to understand what somebody with bad intentions can do with it. If you really want to see how little some people need to find you, I suggest you look up Don't Fuck With Cats on Netflix, by the way. So a lot of parents are proud of their kids, which is great, but a child is not even born yet, and we already start sharing pictures about the child online. 
So even when you do not share any info about yourself, someone else will do it for you because they're proud to have you in their lives. So what is it you can do to keep harassments out of your life? Well, if you find yourself in the situation where you're being harassed or stalked online, it might not be the easiest thing to really defend this. As said before, people will find other ways to keep abusing the internet to make your life hard when they really want to. And even until recent changes, the law has a hard time telling when stalking is becoming a crime because every stalking case is different and law enforcement need a violation to really do something. The internet is a weird place where there are no hard laws and it can be hard to trace somebody online. If, for example, somebody's in another country, things might even get more complex. But if you do find yourself in the situation where you're harassed, always go to the police. Always tell somebody what you're going through because the most important thing in life is that there are always people wanting to help you move forward. Because despite all of this, our story is not without hope. For the end of our journey, we'll go back to Liz again. She decided to dedicate her life to helping others in their journey. Liz is speaking at universities and informing students about how serious stalking is. This journey for me has been harder than I ever imagined it would be. To be frank, at times I just did want to give up, but I didn't. And now I feel like I've put an end to the torment in my head, but I feel like I've started another journey with other people to fight against it and to help others. So actually, epic is the word. I, it does feel epic. You know, I feel I'm satisfied. I'm really satisfied. What they can do to prevent it and just raise general awareness. This story has taken us on a journey through the lives of those affected by stalking. From the digital harassment faced by Liz McLaren and Esther to the tragic murder of Katie, we have seen the devastating impact stalking can have but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Through awareness, support, and action, we can create a safer world for everyone. By sharing these stories, we hope to inspire change and provide comfort to those who are suffering in silence. As the credits roll, please leave a like if you found this video interesting. Subscribe to the Hacker's Journal if you're not already. And of course, let us know what your opinion is about stalking.